Hello and welcome to Mid-American Gardener. This is the show where we talk about plants, plants, and more plants. So thank you for joining us. We're gonna have lots of fun. My name is Diane Noland and I teach horticulture at the University of Illinois in the Crop Sciences Department in the College of ACES. And so I've got three wonderfully talented horticultural guests here. And so we're gonna find out who the panelists are and we're gonna start first with you, Ella Maxwell. Well, thanks, Diane. I work at Hare Nursery up in Peoria, and I um, have been a horticulturist for a long time, so I can answer questions on shrubs or trees. And I have an email, or actually two emails, um, to go over. We got a picture of a mystery weed that's appeared in a shady area, and the, uh, the viewer writes that it has no flowering stems. Well, sometimes plants that grow in the shade may not flower because there's not enough light. And then we also had another one that uh, from Tinley Park, and she says that she has pictured plants in the lawn, and can we identify those? So actually, both of these have the same answer. They're a perennial ground cover or, or a flowering perennial that's escaped. Uh, from the neighbors or maybe her own garden and has reseeded in the lawn. And uh, the first one here that we're seeing on the screen, I think that's a black-eyed Susan. And again, it's probably not going to flower if she uh, could maybe move it, but that's the idea with identification. It's easiest to identify when it is in flower. And then the other picture that we see in the lawn weed, that's actually a juga. And it's a ground cover, a common ground cover, and it does flower in the spring with these spikes of uh, purple foliage. So uh, it's just woven its way through the grass. And again, a broadleaf herbicide could take it out, um, or they could keep it for its kind of uh, interesting appeal. I have the burgundy leafed one every so often through my front lawn and I I like it. It's not bothering anybody. It stays under the mower because we mow high as one should. Good. And so it just looks pretty. So get over monocultures. I think monocultures can be boring. So let something else come up in the lawn. Okay, so thank you. And that was your emails. You had the two put together. Yeah. So for one person, it was a weed. Another person, it's a flower. I find that interesting. All right, let's go from Ella over to David Plussard. Hi, I'm Dave Plussard from Hair Nursery in Peoria as well. And uh, I'm a certified arborist and a horticulturist as she is. So likewise, I, we can take uh, any type of plant questions that you may have. This that I brought along is a chive, and I have had it in a pot now for 21, 22 years. Wow. And uh, the, one of the reasons I do that is that it can escape cultivation. In other words, that can spread and it can reseed. And in spite of Diane's recommendation, I would not want this growing in my lawn. A little too large it's in the kind, lawn. Yeah, and it smells when you mow. Now, if you like the smell of chives, that's fine. Uh, you can cut it. Uh, that's what we do is we cut a few stems and then we put it in uh, on our potatoes or in the sour cream or whatever the case may be. But um, one of the things that I do with it is I just leave it on the patio I never uh, take it in, I never put it in a garage or anything, I just leave it on the patio and every year it comes through just fine. It is so uh, winter hardy, so that makes it really very nice. Keeping it in the pot is, keeps it contained. It will send up some really, really pretty flowers. It's actually uh, in the onion uh, genus and uh, the flowers look like onion flowers. They uh, send up a stem and then you have kind of a bluish pink flower that grows on top, but you never want to let that go to seed because it does spread and it is a little difficult to control. So uh, chives is a great plant that is very hardy, easy to take care of, and can be delicious to eat. And you can eat the flowers. So yes, you, you can eat, eat the, flowers. the flowers before. I usually don't let them get that far. I'm just never going to risk it going to seed okay. but, because oh. it comes up very easily by seed. 
Yeah, I don't think I'd want that in my lawn. Yeah. I was thinking more ground covers. Okay, thank but you. That is hardy. I'd never have tried that, so that's yeah. a good idea. I actually did it by mistake. I left it and forgot it <laughs> one year, and now I just leave it out all the time. And sometimes well. you learn the best by making a mistake, and sometimes you learn what mistakes never to do again. That's correct. But this is a good one. Okay, thank you, Dave. And now I want to say your... <laughs> <laughs> I, I've got you written down as your maiden name, so I've got to say, hi, Karen Ruckel. I've got you listed as Karen Carlson. Boy, that was close. Karen, <laughs> be whoever you want. What would you like to tell us? Um, I also work at Hair Nursery in Peoria and um, kind of in trees, shrubs, perennials. And what I wanted to bring up today is um, the plant that I have over here that in spring, just because they're selling it and it's pretty doesn't mean you should buy it. And this right here just looks very pretty. Everybody's mm -hmm. been loving how pretty it looks and the, the pink color of it, and it's a heather. And it does look very pretty and it does look enticing, but it's just gonna die. So I think it's a waste of time. And when you flip over the label, it even does say it's hardy to zone six. And so it's not gonna make it in my area or where we are in, in Peoria. And, and Diane says in the Champaign-Urbana area, they don't make it either. So there's just not the right conditions. And I would even say at the store where this was from, half of them will even die before anybody buys them wow. due to improper watering. So I think at this time of the year, getting something like a cute little happy pansy, if you're wanting color and, and brightness, that buying this is a lot better use of money for getting some, some pretty color and it will last longer than the heather. And I think the heather's just a disappointment because you, you are led to think it's, it's going to be there year after year and it even tells you to, to group it in threes and it'll, it'll die. It'll die in threes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, we considered calling this zone, the zone five gardener. You know, I mean, this is, all of our viewing area is zone five, really? so so this is zone six. So maybe a microclimate, but it'd be several hours south. So anyway, thank you for that. But it is pretty. I've planted, I've landscaped with this in Florida, <laughs> but not here. Okay. Well, I have a quick announcement. The uh, Moms Weekend happens on the U of I campus every spring. And this year it is April 8th and 9th, and the students have a great flower show. This is the 62nd year for the Moms Weekend Flower Show. So if you are around and want to come on Saturday, April 8th from nine to six, Sunday, April 9th from nine to four, and it is in the Stock Pavilion, and that's on Pennsylvania Avenue in Urbana. So just come Lincoln Avenue to Pennsylvania, and you'll find it, and all four of us at the table have been involved with the flower show at some time or another. And sure. it is really, it's the students do all of it and the teachers just kind of get asked to do things and you know, we just help, we don't direct it. So the students do a great job. So come to the Moms Weekend Flower Show. All right, with that, let's go on to our next segment about the Did You Know plant. <music> You should not apply insecticides or fungicides with the same sprayer you use for weed killers. Vegetables like melons are very sensitive to the chemicals and even small amounts of weed killer residue can cause damage. I would say mark things well and remember what you're up to. Okay, let's go to the phone lines and David on line two has a rose question. Hi, David. Hi, how are you today? Doing great. Good. I have a small red rose. It gets to be about the size of a half dollar. And my wife planted it along a deck, and it kind of made a nuisance of itself of it. <laughs> and I wanted to transplant it, and I haven't got to it yet, and somehow the main stem got cut. And I took the top end of that, and cut it diagonally and put it in the flower vase and uh, put about, oh, I'd say a fourth of a spoon of sugar with it and about a cup of water. And the wife used to do stuff like that and then get a little, few little hairs on the bottom of it and then she'd plant it. And this is not getting any hairs, but it's staying green. 
Okay, so you can root rose cuttings like that. I've seen people do that, um, but uh, it, it's just taking longer. That sugar that you added is a nutrient source for it, and um, you know you do have to wait, however, till it kind of got some small root hairs to develop before you could transplant it. Um, but you might want to just transplant the bush that you have by the deck now. You could do that, wouldn't you think? If it hadn't started leafing out, I would. Mm -hmm. Well, even if it's just slightly. Just a little. Some of them are starting to come out pretty good. Yeah, so just depending, you could try it and then still see if the other will root. Mm -hmm. So, But I know that nursery, you know, they will do a mist system and doing a really sharp mm -hmm. drainage peat perlite or sand even possibly so but you can just try like you said probably not soon enough for it to root but thank you for that question and hopefully it'll work and you'll have both a transplant and a cutting started well let's go to marie's question and she has a plant question or maybe id question i'm not sure on line three hi marie hi i have a spanish bluebells is what my husband's aunt told me they were when she gave them to me and I tell you what, if I'd known they were going to be this invasive, I never would have planted them. But I planted them on, in a flower bed on the south side of the yard, and they have crept underground, and they're everywhere on the, by our pond, our little pond over on the, head, on the opposite side of the yard. Okay, so tell us the height of it, and is it a dark blue or a lighter blue? And is it a shallow star, or is it a bell? It's a bell. Okay, how it's tall? Sort of, it, it gets up oh, a little over a foot. Okay. Tall, I'd say maybe about 18 inches tall. Is that hyacinthoides or endomion? It sounds like, I've never known that to be invasive. Me neither. I was thinking I want to come and get some because I have areas that could use an invasive flowering. <laughs> you must have the perfect location. I see them in England. It's a little different type, but it's close to that. But. Okay, so what do we tell her? Well. Don't let it go to seed. That's right. <laughs> Any more point. than what you have. But because that's how you think it's spreading, right? It's I think reseeding. So. Yeah. yeah. I have a feeling it's doing it from seed, and it's probably, the bulbs are probably also. They're probably multiply. Yeah, the bulbs will multiply, mm -hmm. and it will go, so it's double. Oh, it's just a shame that it's not something you can just deal with and let it naturalize. Oh, it sounds wonderful. That's right. Give it to your neighbors. <laughs> Have the neighbors come and dig well, neighbor some. probably and already has it. I think the end result is that, you know, she really dislikes it and mm -hmm. wants to get it out of there completely. She'd have to use, like, very, very, very careful application of, like, Roundup just on the leaves of that plant mm -hmm. and, and just, you know, walk away from it. Yeah, we had a daffodil question earlier this spring, and um, a garden club, a local garden club, is going to come and help that person dig the daffodils that she doesn't want. And so you might, if you have any garden club friends, you might put that call out because they will not tear up your yard. They will do it in the right way. But they're going to work on that, so it might be the same thing. But yes, weeds are what you define them as, whereas we would want them. You have them, and now you don't want quite that many. So Spanish bluebells, boy, that's great. Or bad, I mean. Okay, let's go to Tony's question about lilies on line four. Hi, Tony. Hi, Diane. How you doing? Doing great. All right. My question is, is ornamental lilies, that is a bulb, it grows up to a seed pod. How difficult is it to start plants from those seed pods? It, it's probably not real difficult, but it will take a long time. They um, have to grow and develop, and as the plant uh, overwinters, you want to in the spring, you want to make sure you leave the, the foliage all year, and then it will overwinter and then start out again. But it's going to take a while uh, to develop the bulb, and then it'll take a little longer for it to start flowering. So I don't know, maybe four or five years, do you think? And yeah, at might least the seed three. be a different color? I mean, it's not. It maybe doesn't come true to exactly the same color. That's a very good point. Possibly, yes. but it, that might be interesting. Mm -hmm. Sure. But 
all of horticulture is experimentation, you know, when you try something new to make new plants. So go for it. So thank you, Tony, for your question. And now we have another rose question. Uh, line five, Dee has a question for us about roses. Uh, hi, Dee. Hi. Thanks for taking my call. You're uh, welcome. My question is, is it too early for me to cut back my uh, knockout rose? And how far back should I cut it? Okay. Knockouts can get pretty big. You can cut it back fairly far. Um, it really depends on how big you want it to get because some of them I have seen up to eight feet tall. Uh, unbelievable they get that mm -hmm. big, but they do. And so the more you cut it back, the more you are going to keep it under control. And this is the time to do it. So as soon as you're able to get out, I would start trimming it. Okay. I have some roses that just they still have the rose hips on them. I should have used them in the fall, but so I need to get those off of there. Yep. So. Okay, well, we're going to go to uh, Deb's question on line six and about a Norfolk Island pine. Hi, Deb. Hello, we got a Norfolk pine that was given to us some 20 plus years ago as a Christmas present. Uh, it's potted in the house and it's grown to the point that it's uh, taking over the house. Wow. Can, can it be moved outside and will it survive the winter? No, they're, they're not hardy here, unfortunately. And you know, it, it, if a transition, it could get used to going outside for the summer, but that's just then going to encourage more growth, <laughs> which then is gonna give you a problem in the house. And, and I, I grew up with a Norfolk Island pine and Santa Claus used to bring me a new pot every year <laughs> to transplant him every, well, every couple of years. Really? But eventually it, it had to be rehomed um, <laughs> because it, it did get too big. Did you just say so. rehomed? Yes. Well, <laughs> and, and to be rehomed, it needs to go tropical because <laughs> If you visit any tropical islands, you can see Norfolk Island pines that can get as large as 30, 40 feet. Oh, they're trees. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people with uh, sunrooms and greenhouses might have it filled with things they already want in there. So you may need to think about getting it a new home. What's it called? Rehoming. Re 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 <laughs> yeah, take a picture of you and your Norfolk mm -hmm. and frame that. And have it move out. <laughs> of course, it could go outside for the summer if it has a home to go to <laughs> from there. Okay. Well, thank you so much. And I don't think you were a Deb. You might have been a Dave. So I, I apologize for that. <laughs> Oops. Uh, let's go now to line two. And I hope this is Mike. And he has a Star of Bethlehem question. Hi, Mike. Hi, Diane. Uh, my question is, is how do I get rid of those nasty little plants? Boy, you have got a problem. <laughs> yes. yes, you do. Well, I've tried pulling them after a rain like today. Mm -hmm. and yeah, they come up sometimes, and other times the gra that, that grassy plant just pulls out and the bulb stays in the ground. And it's healthy and wants to come back up. You just have to keep at it. There's, <gasps> they're very difficult to control. I really definitely. think the bulbs might be layered down 18 bulb, I mean, I, I don't know how. You may just have to keep digging that area up or cover smother the area, which mm -hmm. could be a huge area. Keep digging it, a little bit of spot spray. You know, like yeah. wick. Oh. I, I think I've found that it works well if you cut it back with like a weed whacker, you know, your, your string trimmer, and then you treat it with Roundup so that the foliage absorbs the uh, herbicide and then you find that you might have to do it again in uh, a couple of days and you do that now in the spring uh, because it is kind of ephemeral and that it disappears and then it'll come back next year. Well, or hope not. Yeah. <laughs> or hopefully it won't come back. Okay, we're gonna take a short break now and go back to some emails. And so Ella, let's start with you. Okay, I had a question about begonias and they had problems with the stems rotting at the base. This is from um, Lanny Butler and she had some, we had some pictures here and these uh, Fibrous rooted begonias are annuals and they uh, can be set outside. They can grow in containers or in the ground. And usually containers, they do quite well. We see it in a window box here because the drainage is improved. You wanna make sure that you have good drainage and a well-drained soil. And that's how you prevent 
these uh, stem rots because they are a water mold fungus that can just rot them out. And also you don't want to plant them too early because they really enjoy the warmth of the um, you know, summer temperatures and not the rise and fall of early spring. Okay, so very good. good luck with your begonias. All right, Dave, you're next. All right, I have a question from Bess. She says, I am interested in planting bare root raspberries. So far, I have found a lot of information on this topic. However, I cannot find out when I should plant them. Perhaps something relative to the last frost? Can you give me any advice on this? Well, they are actually very easy to grow. I've always had good success with raspberries, and I would be planting them now. Uh, as soon as you uh, have them and your ground is workable, I would plant them and the root system will start getting established so that when it's time for them to grow, uh, they'll take off and they'll do a little better job. But depending on where you're getting them, some garden centers actually have refrigeration where they can carry them into May and so you would want to plant them just as soon as you get them uh, in if you're getting them later into the season for sure. Okay very good and now Karen. I have a question from Sharon up in Chicago I had about uh, gardenias and how do you get them to bloom after uh, being in for the winter and when do I put them outside in fertilizer? Well, first off, if you got to live through the winter, congratulations. It's, it's very difficult to keep them happy and it seems like spider mites just love gardenias. So I would wait till, you know, any chance of, of freeze frost is completely gone. The, the thing with gardenias is that they're, they're pretty particular on forming their buds in cooler nights and then just a little bit warmer days but not hot days. So that it's really tough and I know in our area is that it seems like we, we are nice and cool. You could start to get that bud development and then we go too warm. But um, a lot of people seem to have good luck putting them in a part shady location, maybe more on the east side of the house to keep them cooler. And um, even moisture, bright light, and then fertilizing them with a uh, flowering fertilizer but it's more that transition I think is hard from the house to outside um, because of, of how the fluctuation in our temperatures go each spring. But beautiful plant, but it is, it is a tougher plant to execute even, even when you know how to do it just because of how our, our weather changes. Good encouragement, that's good, but it's worth trying. Yes. Very good, okay, let's do a couple more on the uh, phone lines and we're gonna go to line three and we have a tree or a shrub ID question. Hi there on line three. Hi, I actually have two questions and the second one is about mold, but my 91-year-old uh, sister-in-law was telling me about the trees that are blooming in southern Illinois, and by that I mean the real southern Illinois, south of Carbondale and Union County. That is the yeah. real southern Illinois, that's right. Yes, it is. And um, the, uh, her mother, my mother-in-law, my husband's mother, told her told Gracie that it is a was a sulfus berry bush or like S-O-L or it, what I googled was S-O-P-H-O-S. So have you ever heard of anything like that? S-O-P what? I, well what I googled came up S-O-P-H-O-S, sulfus. It looks like sulfus but, but they pronounce it sulfus like as if there's an L in it. Hmm. I have not. We're going to have to move to the south. <laughs> um, is there any way to get a picture of this? We would love. I would love to see this. I'm not. What color are the flowers? Well, I believe they're white. White. Okay. How tall is it? Don't know. Don't know anything more than that. I just tried to Google it, and I. So I'll I'll have her daughter get a picture of it. And, yes, uh, I'm curious what it would be. I, I, yeah, it's flowering right now. It could be service berry. Do you think? White. But yeah. you know, we yeah. we don't know enough to guess. Yeah. Probably well, not I'll a star magnolia. Out. I'll find find out and get back in touch. Okay. With you. My second problem is, do you know anything? Can you tell us anything about moles? Oh, we all know about oh, moles. Oh yeah, they're bad news. That's what I know about moles. <laughs> um, you would have two choices to rid your lawn of moles, and that would be using a uh, poison bait 
which they've developed, or setting some type of trap and physically killing the mole with the trap. And uh, they are active now. Uh, I've had some new runs. I thought I got rid of them last fall, but that wasn't the case. So those would be the two options. And there's some easy traps now that you can just step on to activate. And uh, even the, the poisonous baits um, are pretty effective and easy to apply as well. You just have to put them in runs that they're uh, utilizing. Okay, so I have to jump in because it's in the show. And we could spend probably a half hour on that. So, but it's, they have been so active this year. Wow. Yeah. Well, we want to thank each of you for watching and you for being on the show. Thank you so much. We hope you have a great week gardening. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>